All right, Let's see uh, what's been going on with the truck here. I've been making a uh, little progress. I don't know if you notice it, but it looks like there's a front fender on there. And all the the weather stripping and molding is done on the truck and everything. And uh, like I say, making great progress. But, uh, man, for every, every bit of progress I make, uh, something happens. So, uh, let me show you what I, uh, I had to run into. You notice this side doesn't have a fender. All right. You know, it's like, you know, you ever step in poo and uh, you can't get it off your foot? Well, that seems like what's happening to me, but we're going to get through this. Let me open the hood for you and uh, let me show you where we're at. It is looking good. I could have had that done the other day. Could have had both fenders on, the grill on, and the whole the whole truck would have been put back together. But let me show you what happened. All right. It's going to be a little dark down here. I got a flashlight, but uh, let me show you what our problem is here. All right. Right here, if you see these two bolts here, this is where a bracket goes that holds our Z-bar, okay? And then that connects down here. I don't know if you can see that, but right here, this is the engine block. There's a bolt here and a bolt down here. And that's where the inside bracket was to hold the Z-bar. Now I want you to take note, right next to it here is the bell housing. And there's a bolt hole here and a bolt hole up here. So keep that in mind. Like I said, right now, you, you're not going to understand anything until you, you see it laid out on, on the bench. And then even down there, if you look down in the corner, way down here, you see that little uh, opening? This here is uh, actually your clutch fork, which gets pushed in and out and, and engages your, your clutch. So, keep that in mind, too. And uh, let's go inside and show you what I'm up against here. Got grease all over my finger. I'm gonna clean that off. And let me clean the table off here, and uh, then I will show you what we're up against. All right. It's been a couple weeks since uh, that first clip where I was showing you the truck, and uh, here are the parts. I took them out, cleaned them, and uh, you know I've been working on a truck for a couple years now, and uh, and this is what I've been looking at. You know, every time I look at this, I, I look at it and I say, okay, we're gonna need uh, bushings for that. You know because it's wore out and it looks like a a fast cheap easy job but uh, let me show you what we ran into here all right when I unbolted everything I mean remember this thing was all greased up and everything so you're only going to see so much at the time so uh, I unbolted it right this goes on the frame and this part was on the block and this is they call this your Z bar here because if you look at it a certain way, like right there, it almost looks like a Z. But anyway, this is what I, I find. This ball here is, is half missing. So, even with new bushings, all right? I, I ordered the bushings. The bushings, they didn't tell me they were on back order, you know, so I ordered them. And then I waited uh, two months, and then I decided, well, you know, well, I don't know where these things are at or when they're going to come. So then I tried to find another uh, source, and I did. So, uh, and remember, these parts are all obsolete. And this here is all one big piece, and you can't get it. You know, it's not like this is bolted on or anything. This is uh, riveted or peened on or something like that, and that's just the way they made it. And uh, somebody had their hands in this, and this, this side over here, this ball isn't as bad, but it's still worn. And uh, somebody had welded that on. Nice weld, and uh, it worked, but anyway. So, all right, let me show you what, let me get the book and show you what uh, is supposed to go on and what I realized. All right, all right, before we go to the book, I want you to look at the ends here. And uh, you could tell that there was a, about a one inch piece of pipe uh, welded on there on each side. And I'm thinking, all right, that's uh, reasonable, you know what I mean? This uh, 
this pipe here must have been so wore out that they decided to uh, somebody decided to uh, replace it and, and put a new end on there you know so uh, I'm looking at the book over here and uh, here are the bushings they're split bushings but I'm looking at the bar and the the arms themselves are just about at the end of that pipe and I'm saying that they don't look right you know so I don't think nothing about it. Okay. And then I'm looking at the the rest of this. And here's the bell housing. And the bell housing has an ear on there, which I showed you on the truck. And if you follow all these little lines and everything, this this one piece here, which is this, it's supposed to be uh, bolted to the, the bell housing there. And I, I definitely took mine off the block. So I'm looking at this and I'm figuring out what's going on. And then you got another part here, right here. That's uh, your your uh, your other bolt that goes to the the clutch itself. You know, the fork. And uh, I got that right here. And I'm looking at that. And this has a washer on there. And I'm... I'm looking at that, and somebody brazed a nut on there, and I see that's not what's supposed to be here. And then I'm looking at this, and there's another extension. Somebody somebody welded a looks like about a three three inch extension. I don't know. It's probably a pipe, so it, it could be a one inch extension or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so I'm looking at this, and I'm saying they didn't do this for for the bushing. They they extended that, you know. So it's this this pipe itself is uh, two inches longer than it should be, and I'm thinking, why would they do that? You know, and I'm scratching my head and everything. So I, f I finally figure, let me go check the serial numbers on that that engine. So sure enough, they don't have uh, serial numbers on them. They just got block numbers, and the truck is a '64, and I I figured out that that engine is out of a a 1955 to a 1957 truck and instead of a 292 it's a 272 so so we know what we're dealing with now so now now I gotta figure out how to remedy this situation you know the balls I could fix I could I could weld them and and make them round again if I have to but uh, let me put you up on a tripod and I'll, I'll show you this it's going to be a lot of talking, so uh, some of you guys might enjoy it. You know, you might find it interesting. Other ones, you know, say, oh, geez, I, ain't, I don't want to listen to this crap. So, uh, be forewarned. All right, let me put you up on a tripod, and I'll show you what the, how I'm trying to remedy it. There's something else. Before I go any further, of course, uh, there's uh, a spring here, and on the... The release mechanism there, you know, the fork, there's a hole for the spring. And on the bracket here, there's a little arm that comes down, and the spring attaches to that. But on this piece, <clears throat> it's not there. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, put one on there. So it's, a, it's another problem we're running into, which, which could be uh, remedied pretty easy. So, all right, hold on. We'll put you up on a tripod and uh, do a little more talk, okay? Alright, so after waiting two months and not getting any uh, bushings from that one place where they're still back ordered, I was able to find another place and these here are actual uh, bronze bushings and uh, they look, look how tiny they are and uh, what they do is they fit on a ball like that and then it just goes in the, the side there and it's supposed to move like that. You need you need movement on that, and I'll, I'll show you later why. But uh, they they fit on there. They fit on there nice on that one ball, and even on this ball, you know, it would have worked. You know, but then I even told Road Queen, you know, because these things these things here are only like an eighth inch, and I say with them balls the way they are. I actually put this, I, I spun this around because that this is wore out because of the way they had that rubbing on there. 
you know, I, I spun that around that way, and I figured that all the tension would be up on the flat. But then I told her, I says, the way that is, I said, them, them small pieces of bronze, you know, I know bronze is brittle. I says, uh, they're not, they're not going to last a week. And uh, I was wrong. They didn't, they didn't even last the, the little bit to put them on. You know, they broke, they actually broke and, and uh, while well, I was putting them on. So, the newer, the newer ones are made of, uh, I think maybe Delran or something. You know, and uh, you're not supposed to, you, you're not supposed to have to uh, grease them. You know, this, this whole pipe here was full of grease. You know, it's got a grease fitting and everything. And the, the newer ones, like I say, are, are made out of a, a plastic and they're supposed to be even better so uh, I kept lurk looking and searching and I was able to get a set of the plastic ones there so I'm thinking I still I still gotta fix this I either gotta weld that up or uh, come up with another solution and what I was thinking about I'm still here was I have these ball bearings and they sort of fit in there, you know? They fit in there and they're nice and they move and everything and but this there's, there's like a ten thousandths play, you know? And I was gonna just uh, cut a bolt and and weld that ball on there and that would solve my problem here. But uh I figured I'd come up with something different. So, Alright, so this is what I came up with. Since this was all wired out and everything, originally is it, it was an inch. These uh, barrels are an inch. So this is what I came up with. I actually had a set of ball barrels. You know, I got them uh, in stock. And I don't know I don't know what they are. They're like maybe an inch and a sixteenth or something like that. But anyway, they they fit perfectly into that. Hardly any play. This one here is so tight, you know, it's perfect. And it's overkill. I mean, it's ball barons. It would never wear out on you. But uh, let me put these together. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna put, I'm just going to use this whole wear and, and mount them on here just to show you what the problem I, I ran into with that. All right. Like I said, I'm just using these brackets here to, to hold on there so I can show you what my uh, solution would have been. All right. Now that would have went in there. I'll try and keep this in frame. And that would have went in there. And that would have worked good. If these ends were, were welded on right, you can't see it, but... You see the ends moving? I mean, they, they're not even close to being uh, square. So I think it would have worked. But then the other problem is, is there's no play. Hardly any play at all. You know, up and down. And you need that. And that's, that's more critical than the, the wobbliness, because... You know, so if that's if the engine didn't move, you know the engine goes up and down. You know when you accelerate and decelerate and everything, and the worse your motor mounts are, the longer and more wore out they are, the worse it is. So uh, this brilliant idea of mine would have worked if everything was stable, but it's not. So all right, so so far, let me get the the price list here. All right. So far, these here, they're nine dollars a set. So they're, these are, they call out a set, and you need two of them. So, so I don't know how you call it a set, because you can't, you can't use one without the other. So it was nine dollars, nine dollars for that. So I had to get two of these, come to eighteen dollars, and then shipping and handling was like six dollars. So you're talking. 20, 24 bucks. So I figure, twenty five hours for them, and I destroyed them. So we we threw away twenty five hours. So keep that in mind, and uh, let me take this apart, and we'll keep going, and I'll, I'll show you what else I come up with. All right. So here's where we're at now. I uh, I ordered another set of bearings, and here's the set right here. 
these are the, the plastic ones I'm telling you about, and they were, these are, like I say, these, they even advertise, they say that they've been tested, you know, over 100,000 uh, pushes on the clutch, and, uh, you know, they got little, little titties here that, that uh, make them stay together. But anyway, like I say, they're, they made a Delran or something, and, uh, it would have went on like this, and it would have it would have worked nice if that ball was in good shape. Like I say, you can't get this. Even even that, they they changed the design of that into like a, a piece of poly stuff. You know, it was like just straight, and uh, they got rid of the ball and everything on the, on the later models. So here's what we come up with. Right, I was able to get these uh, these plastic bushings, so it's they were cheap. These were. These were five dollars a piece, so that's ten dollars. And uh, I also ordered some uh, little rubber bumpers for the glove box, three dollars for the glove box. So you add up this with the uh, shipping and everything, and this comes at twenty-five dollars, twenty-four thirty-six. So we're up, we're up to fifty bucks already, and we didn't we didn't even start. So we got this. So then I'm looking at this and I say, well, if I <clears throat> I cut them off and, and weld on a new pipe and everything, I find new pipe. And then I says, you know what? Why don't I just buy a whole new piece? Of, it's actually not pipe. And, and they use pipe on this because you can, you can see it's got a, a weld on the inside. So that's that was pipe they used. This here they call tubing. And you can get this the exact thickness and size you want. So what I got, I got one inch inner diameter and an inch and a quarter outer diameter and this here fits perfectly in there see that and that's that's the way it should be so I think that was uh, that was 12 bucks and I got 15 percent off and I brought it down to nine dollars and uh, then it was uh, another ten dollar shipping shipping kills you so uh, we're uh, we're at like 20 bucks on that so so now we're still we still need to figure out the ball deal here. You know, like I said, I I could uh, clad weld that and then just file it down. Look at that, they even even wore down the the bracket here from, from rubbing. So I kept doing research, I kept researching and everything and I says it's gotta be it's gotta be these balls gotta be out there somewhere. You know, because they, they use them for all kinds of stuff. And sure enough. I came across this. These are for a Chevy, and they're almost identical. They're the same, same width. You know, I mean, I'll have to met this. Like I said, I was riveted up and everything. I'll, I'll grind these off, and then fill that hole in, and then grind it and drill it because this this is actually a round bolt with flat ends on it, so they could they could stick in there and it won't turn. But I couldn't get the exact size, so I got as, as close as possible, right? Mine, mine originally, and this, this one here, was uh, 83 thousandths. I measured it, and the smallest I can get here was 84 thousandths. So it's so close that I could actually, since it's plastic, I could, I could make this fit. Or make it go on there, and that's that's as good as it gets, and it's tight, and it ain't gonna fit. It ain't gonna fit inside here. So all I have to do is take off some material on here, grind it down, file it down, you know, put it on the lathe, and just just take off ten thousands, and we should be good. So, so that's where we're at. So I gotta I gotta cut these off, put it on the truck, line them up. You know, I was you know the 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 clutch uh, rod going from the pedal was so wearing so much into the floor that it was it wore a hole all the way through. And when I fixed that, I, I said, "How could that? How could that be that far off?" And now, now I know. So that's where we're at. We got a little job that would have been just bushings, and and now we got to re reconstruct the whole truck. So that's where we're at. I hope you guys found some of that interesting. And even this, you know, we'll have to uh, put this on there and, and figure that out. This, I think there might be a bushing that goes in there too, because this is where that hooks, and that's 
you know, that's just way too sloppy. I don't know if it's sloppy because, you, you know, you need that play, you know, when the, when the engine torques. I don't know. But we'll figure it out. And even this, there's like a little notch in here. We've got to weld that up. So we we got a big project instead of just replacing bushings. So the first thing we're going to do is make these fit, these uh, these new bushings. So let's do that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that, but uh, I know some of you guys already left. But uh, let's continue on. I think I forgot to tell you what, the, what them little balls cost. <clears throat> what do you think something like that costs? These little, uh, these little balls here. I got it right here. I ordered it from Speedway. Oh, these are, these are off a of Chevy. Uh, 1970 uh, Camaro, Chevelle, Corvette, stuff like that. So, uh, Chevy, come to the rescue again for the old Ford. But, uh, I had these things here were $13 a piece. And that was a pretty good deal because everywhere I looked, somebody wanted $20, 30 for them. And, uh, so right there, $13 a piece, you're talking like uh, 26 bucks, And then shipping, shipping on these two little things, two of these, was, uh, Thirteen twenty nine. So, with the shipping and two of these and tax, it came to uh, forty two dollars. Forty two dollars for two of these. So I, I haven't been adding it up, but uh, we're 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 well into this thing for over hundred bucks already, and that's uh, not labor or anything. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you start working on a sixty year old truck that somebody hacked up. All right, enough jibber jabbing. Let's do some work. All right, I think we're getting pretty close here. I got you guys set up uh, above here. I got you magnetized to a cabinet there, so I don't know how much vibration you're going to get. So uh, bear with us. Uh, let's bring us down. See uh, see how close we are. You know, you 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 do this, and you don't you don't think you're getting anywhere, but uh, you can actually see down here, and even on the other side here. You know, there are steel filings because. Uh, I haven't done steel here in a while, but uh, you are making progress. It just don't look like it. All right, let's go. The maroon Scotch Bright. I don't know uh, what grit that is. Huh? But it is making it shiny. pretty good because it's before when I was putting it on it was actually clamping itself on now now I pretty much have to hold it so uh, I think we're pretty good all right there's no I don't know how well you guys can see that there's a little slit here and uh, it's 
pretty close. I would, yeah, I would, uh, I would say there may be a, a, a millionth of a gap there, which is fine. Let's try our pole, let's try our pipe, tubing. Try our tubing on there. Oh yeah, that, that fits there nice. Okay, yeah, we're not, uh, it's not moving inside the tube, but uh, it, it is a, a, a tight fit, but not, not very tight. So uh, we're gonna call that good. <clears throat> Matter of fact, Oops, sorry about that. I, I, I didn't mean to shake this. I put some nuts on the back here so it wouldn't uh, mess up them threads. But uh, you can actually see how nice that is. Like I say, they say you don't have to lubricate this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some uh, grease in there anyway. Alright, that's what we want. Alright, one more. One more to do. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That, uh... Yeah, if I squeeze them, there's uh, no gap there. So, alright, we're good. We're happy with that. It only took like uh, 15 minutes. Alright, I'm going to do the other one and, and uh, <clears throat> we'll cut up that bracket and uh, mount these things. Alright, yeah, it worked out well. Put this in here. You guys see? Alright, this is, I'm going to have to cut this down to this, so we're going to have to, going to, have to take off about three and a half inches, but uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to put it on a truck and uh, get a per, an exact measurement. And then these things here, on, on the original in here, there's actually a step, so these can only go in so far. And what I'm going to do is, I'll probably uh, find out what that is. You know, these things aren't quite an inch. So I think the, the thing is, an, the, the step is an inch. So I might have to put a, maybe a cotter pin through there or something, just to keep it. I don't, I don't know why it, uh, you know, I, I know why. So, the, so your bar isn't sliding back and forth. That'll keep that, that'll keep your, uh, your pedals uh, lined up. Okay, so that's what that's for. But uh, this is working good, this is, uh, this uh, worked good. So, all right. Our next step is uh, let me get the cutoff wheel, and we'll uh, we'll cut this ball off and uh, see what we got to do. There's a big shoulder here. I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna have to fill that hole in and redrill it or what. But uh, for starters, let's cut that ball off. All right. Yeah, that lathe. If any of you guys ever uh, come across a small lathe like that, I mean, they they come in so much. They, they come in handy. They can almost do anything. Matter of fact, uh, just last week, uh, my buddy Rusty Glovebox made a, a bolt, something you couldn't buy in a store. It was like a custom-made bolt. And uh, I even left a comment. I told my sis, then things come in handy for uh, silly little things like that. And here's, uh, here's a perfect example. You know, this, that, that took me about 20 minutes to do both of these. And it would have taken me about an hour with a, with a drill and file and sandpaper and everything. So if you guys ever get a chance to get a a little mid-size uh, lathe, they're well worth picking up for, you know, a couple of hundred, five hundred bucks maybe. Alright, yeah we cut this ball off. Let me come back here so you can focus. Cut the ball off and then we ground it flush. And then I took uh, I took a punch, and I was hoping that this this three quarter sorry about that this uh, three quarter round here would have would have popped right out, but it looks like it's it's caving in around the rest of it there. So might have to put a piece of metal in there, but uh, let's see what we got. You guys still in focus here? Yeah, these are the kind of things you run into. Okay. You see that the whole outside is caving in. So let me uh, 
Let me put this on here a little better because right now it's hitting the voice, I think. All right, can you see? I put you over on this side of the voice so it wasn't bottoming out. Huh. Okay. So that little thing is sort of coming out. Let's take this out. All right. Yeah, that little piece. Sorry, sorry about that. Sometimes I start looking at stuff. I forget. I forget to see if you guys are in the frame. All right. The little piece is coming out. Matter of fact, here is that whole little uh, thing. Yeah, that was a, that was a, some kind of strange thing. It's all splined there, and that was pushed into that spline there. So, uh, let me look this over and see if we can salvage this. All right. Yeah, I lifted that up, and uh, the shoulder, the shoulder here is going to be fine. And I'm looking at this, and uh, I think what I might do is uh, there's a three eight part. I might uh, grind this out, and then it looks like a half inch hole. I think I might. Uh, Put a little half inch slug in there, weld a half inch slug in there, and then we'll just drill a brand new hole. All right, let me figure it out. Nothing's ever easy, huh? All right, let me show you what we came up with. All right, it was the original plan. You know, I, uh, you got that hole there, it's half inch hole, and I got some half inch stock. I was going to uh, stick it in there and weld the plug in there and then drill it. And drill it undersized to the to the size of the flats, and then get a file and file the edges until it went in there, so it would uh, it would hold it in place. But uh, that's uh, that's you're talking another hour or two, and uh, I figure I'm gonna come up with this idea. I'm just gonna stick that in there like that, and put a bolt on it. Right, you're only holding the pivot here. And this is definitely going to outlast me. So, I could just leave it like that and bolt it in. But I'm, I'm going to put it in there and that centered it. And that that's sticking out just like as far as the original was. So, uh, I'm going to bolt that in like that. And then uh, put a good tack, a couple good tacks on the bottom so it don't move. And then actually tack the bolt to the nut, so so that won't go anywhere, and that should be fine. You know, you can't overthink this, right? Some of you guys might not agree with it, but uh, hey, do what you want to your truck. All right, so let's uh, weld that on. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this one out, and since I know how that comes out, I think what we have to do is grind the end off of this, and that that bolt should pop out of here. But I, I am going to have to fill that in with a weld while I got the welder out, so. Alright. Alright. Got another change of plan here. I put the balls in here and uh, tightened them up. And uh, they seem to tighten up pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, uh, right, instead of welding everything up, I'm going to put a little Loctite on here. This is the blue kind. You know, I got the red kind, but uh, hey, you know. You can put a washer on here. I'm gonna put a lock washer on here and put a nut on here. And call it good. See that ball ain't moving at all right now, so alright. I think that's uh it's better than it was. I'm going to do the same with this. This goes on this side though. I'll put a washer on it. Let's put a little Loctite on there first. Alright, we should do your washer. Put a washer on there. This thing actually centers itself. You guys in frame there? Sometimes I forget. 
Okay. That's holding itself in place. Alright, I think it'll be fine. Don't forget, it's going to be greased up and uh, it's going to have that plastic thing in there, so that, that ain't going to spin. Right? Why make more work for yourself? Alright, we got bigger fish to fry. We got we to gotta cut these arms off and we got to cut this to length, bring it out to the truck and cut it to length and everything. So, let's, uh, let's go do some real work. Alright, cut this to length. And I put some screws in here. I was going to put some cotter pins, but uh, cotter pins are kind of soft. So I just I just put bolts, little little tiny bolts. And what that'll do is, when that's on there, that'll keep it from rubbing up against the, the side there. You know, when it torques. When that, when that motor torques, just, you know, this thing is, uh, this thing goes boom, boom, crazy. So uh, I think we got it. So, uh Let's go put it in the truck and uh, try it on for size. All right, yeah, we got it all bolted up, and uh, if you can see back there, get a little little space. And over here, looks like a big gap, but that's that's just how it uh, sits, you know, because that that bar isn't exactly straight, you know. It's uh, further down on the engine, it's up on the frame. But uh, I'm happy with it, you know. I got a little play, not much, but uh, it spins freely. And uh, here's the bar it has to hook up to. That's the clutch. And uh, sorry about that. So you just have to cut that, cut that, and weld that to the bar, and that'll that'll pretty much line up right where it should be. So. Right, we're happy with that. All right. I guess the next move is uh, to cut these arms off of this bar here, and then uh, I think this this clutch bar here I have to reverse it. I think it goes in from this side. It would probably work for me the way, but you know, up here is a piece of rubber, and you don't want to uh, you know wherever that wherever that sits. I want to line it up as best as possible, so, uh, alright, let's go inside and do something. Alright, it's starting to get dark out. It's only 4.30, but, uh, you know, it's that time of year. So, uh, let me show you what we did. We took a cut off wheel and, uh, cut these little arms off, cleaned them up. So, uh, they'll fit the, they'll fit the new bar nice. The new tube. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow, if it's nice, we'll uh, go over to the truck here and just tack them on. You know, tack them where they belong, and then uh, maybe I'll take a ride over a little dirt bikes and uh, let him weld it up. You know, I know if I weld it up, it'll look like uh, crap. So it's worth the trip. Just go over there, see him. All right. Maybe we'll see you guys tomorrow, maybe we won't. Alright. Yeah, we just checked the length of this video and it's uh, getting pretty long in the tooth. So, uh, I think we're going to cut you off here. We hate to cut you off, but uh, we don't want you watching an hour and a half video, right? Because most people wouldn't do it anyway. Alright, so uh, I'll just tell you what my next move is and uh, we'll show it to you when we're done in another video. You know, we're just going to uh, go out there and get these parts and weld them tack them in place where they belong and then take it over to little dirt bikes and let him weld it or by that time who knows he might be over here he can he can weld them on his way over here but uh, also I showed you that hole on the clutch fork down there and it looked a lot bigger than this uh, rounded nut you know that rounded nut's supposed to fit in there so uh, even though this looks like it'll work I think we're going to uh, modify it a little different and just because uh, this nut here is supposed to uh, lock up against this one and tighten that so uh, I think we'll just modify this one. We'll, we'll get a, a, a nut that size and put like a rounded, rounded uh, half round on, on the end there because it's, it's supposed to sit inside that, that uh, hole and uh, 
move. You know, this just this works, and this uh, is just a washer that will push flat up against it. So uh, we're going to modify that and, and make it uh, a little better, and uh, hopefully uh, we can get this thing working. So, so for now we're going to call this a video, and uh, like I say, some of you guys uh, might find it interesting, and some of you is uh, probably left. But uh, I appreciate you guys that uh, that did hang in there for uh, you know the 40 minutes or so. So uh, all right, enough of this, enough talking. So uh, we'll see you in the next one.